Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Rightsy's Executive Interview Series, where we interview C-Suites executives from people all over the world at various online recruitment marketplaces. We are here in London, England at Job Boards Connect. We are here with Greg Dulunoville, the Executive Vice President of Operations for Talent.com. Welcome to uh, the interview. Thank you, Alan Tiri. Yes. So tell uh, everybody a little bit about, you know, who you are, what's your role and what company you're with. Sure. So um, Greg with Talent.com, we're a um, job search platform. And um, essentially, we've been there for 10 plus years now. Uh, we're the number three uh, largest uh, job board in the world uh, after Indeed and LinkedIn, obviously. Uh, and uh, I've been with the business since almost the beginning. I joined as employee number two. So just after the three co-founders, so wow. it's been uh, 11 years now okay. and uh, I'm in charge of operations. That means like customer success, sales operations, uh, partnerships, as well as sales strategy. So you keep everything going, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I try to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like the, uh, like the director uh, on set, you know, making sure everything's running smoothly. Exactly. A little bit of a Swiss knife, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you're from Switzerland, right? I'm from France, but I live in Switzerland. You live in Switzerland. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you traveled from uh, Switzerland here to uh, the UK for Job Boards Connect. Sure. Um, what's it like, you know, growing from, you know, being the second employee and growing from what you were to what you are now? Like... There's got to be a big delta between where you started and where you are now. What's that been like, the growth and, you know, for you? Oh, for sure. It's, it's been quite a ride, I have to say. It's, and it's also a roller coaster because it's not <laughs> like uh, always, you know, uh, always bright. Uh, exactly. But uh, I always uh, like to joke, you know, recently that it feels that I've been part of like five different companies over the last 10 years. Uh, we started, you know, uh, five, uh, five of us in a very like uh, dark office that we're sharing with another IT company back then in, uh, in Canada, in Montreal, because that's where we started. Okay. And, uh, and to be uh, where we are now, uh, with like a peak at 500 employees and now having to right size a little bit the organization again uh, with like 10 plus offices around the world. So uh, it's, it's been a ride, uh, but I have to say uh, um, you have to enjoy every single moment. I bet, I bet. So you've lived in multiple countries. Sure. What's been your favorite country? <laughs> well, I think it depends on the stage of your life, for sure. Okay. Uh, as a young professional, um, I loved, I started my career actually uh, in Chicago. Okay. Uh, and uh, loved it as a young professional. Then Montreal was a great transition, you know, between uh, America and, and Europe, because okay. it's also has that vibe, you know. And now uh, Switzerland, I think, is amazing, especially when you start to build a family and uh, with the proximity, you know, with uh, the mountains and the lakes. So happy, uh, happy to be there. Are you getting some skiing or snowboarding in? Please tell me you're doing Of that. course. Every <laughs> single weekend, you need to enjoy the mountains while you're in Switzerland. Yeah. Well, next time I'm in Switzerland, I'm going to come and hit the slopes with you. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, uh, you know, about Talent.com and, you know, what are some of the uh, uh, things you got going on over the next six months to a year? Like what what's on the horizon for Talent.com? Sure. Uh, really, I think we are in a pivotal moment in the company. Uh, we grew very much uh, organically the first maybe like seven years because we only raised like money at the very beginning from business angels and then like we started to introduce institutional investor back in 2019 and then vcs in uh, uh 2022 uh and and now like uh, we professionalize the business so okay. essentially like we started recruiting a c-suite um and then um having really like kind of some funders also like uh, uh stepping down like to um uh, be part of the board, but not being operational anymore. And now, like, really what we're focusing on is uh, building our product and engineering organization to be, um, to switch, let's say, from a sales-driven organization to a product-driven organization. So that's the focus. Nice. And what are some of those products that you guys are, are, are releasing soon? Actually, like, um, in our business, like, uh, and the way we like to think about it is that we need to be laser focus okay so it's it's always been okay. like uh, um the the key uh moment uh in the company has been like okay like we don't want to sell different products let's make sure that we do perfectly well what everyone needs and it's essentially like serving candidates with the right jobs mm -hmm. and serving the employers with the right candidates so uh, 
And then like the model, of course, we pivoted a lot, but it's always been pay for performance. So at, the, at this point, we're focused on making sure that we're also transitioning the business from more of, a, let's say, being a vol volume player, where we're doing a lot of uh, arbitrage to really being a platform that candidates love to use and employers will love to use as well. Sure. I mean, you know, one of the big things with job boards is, is they're very focused on the actual company that's doing the hiring. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them may not necessarily focus on the job seeker specifically, right? They may have blogs, they may have a few things to help get the candidates, you know, learning more about how to get the job, but they don't actually have the tools to help the candidates. So at Right we like to say, care about your candidate, right? We want to help job boards like yourself um, to empower the job seekers. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing on the job seeker side to help the job seekers, you know, get to the jobs faster, make sure that they're beating the ATS system, make sure that they're, you know, actually getting to the hiring manager? No, for sure. I think at this point, it's about uh, working on the core. So the core is really, okay, job matching. That's, that's key. For that, you need to make sure that you collect the right information from the candidates. You want um, to get the signal from them. Okay. So essentially, like uh, get their profile, but also get their intent. What are you looking for? You know, what kind of jobs? What? Uh, where are you looking for? Are you open to remote? Um, and then salary as well. Like it's important. Okay, what are you interested? Sure. Like, uh, 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 and what are you okay to take and not to take? You know. Uh, getting those signals and then matching that with what the employees are looking for and then obviously trying to uh, make that process as seamless as possible. So for that, ATS integration is very important. Um, so obviously like the quick apply feature, but then further down funnel because I think we're moving, as I said, from quantity to quality. Correct. So making sure that we get the down funnel signals from the employers. And that's why disposition data is key as well. Sure. I mean, you know, when you're dealing with thousands of job applications, it's tough to be able to go through all of them, right? Um, but then on the flip side of the coin, you have job seekers complaining that they're not even getting phone calls back, right? And so how do we balance that? How do we bring those two together, right? And so we personally think that it's your personal brand, right? You yeah. may have one resume um, that looks better and that gets through the ATS system versus the actual candidate that is actually the better qualified person. So it's like, what are some things that like some job seekers can do to make sure that they're being seen, right? What are some things that maybe some job seekers uh, can incorporate to make sure that they're actually getting to the, to the right hiring manager? <laughs> That's a tough, a tough question. question. Yeah, it's you a tough question I mean? because as a marketplace, we try to facilitate, you know, uh, the connection being made. Uh, but for that to happen, you need to make sure that it's happening on the marketplace as well. Because like what wh it gets difficult is when employer says, OK, like I want you to redirect the candidate to my website. And if I redirect the candidate to their website, then we lose the information. So if the connection happens within the marketplace, it's much easier because then you can start to engage, you know, and make sure that uh, both like the employer and the candidates are being held accountable for uh, communicating. So the employer to say, OK, like, uh, give me the signal back, okay? Like, did you select me? Um, and then, or did you reject me? And send that message automatically. That can happen as well with the ATS, but it needs to be correctly set up. Sure, sure. Are you guys implementing any newer technologies like uh, artificial intelligence or anything like that in your platform? Yeah, I think there's a lot of hype around like obviously AI and machine learning. Uh, but it's true that now that the technologies are much more, um, let's say, uh, available to um, uh, everyone. Yeah. Um, then we started to implement that for basic, but for the base actually, sure. when we're getting the jobs. Right. So we're actually completely like redesigning our indexation technology to be able to collect the jobs from every single source on the internet that has jobs, and we're using AI to enhance uh, the. Uh, job description as well as the attributes that we're getting from these jobs to make sure that either we get the information, for example, about the salary, about the commute times, about the type of contract, that kind of thing. And if the information is unavailable, then try to get a broader information so that, for example, we can give salary estimates. Sure, sure. I mean, I find AI to be a helping tool. It's not the end all be all, right? Like you said, there's a lot of hype around it. However, it's increasing or excuse me decreasing the amount of time 
uh, employees have to work on certain things, right? So it's yeah. hel it's helping improve, but it's not eliminating humans. No. <laughs> right? We still need that human touch. Yeah. That human right. factor. Actually, it would be interesting to see how candidates are going to use AI because I've read a lot of articles recently about these new tools that have been created for candidates to be able to binge apply thanks to AI. But then, like, to your point uh, a little bit earlier, how are candidates going to differentiate themselves? They're lost in the sauce. Exactly. <laughs> and not only that, but you inundate recruiters with thousands of candidates it now becomes um, a needle in a haystack, Yeah. right? So it's like with the advent of AI, it helped increase um, deliverability, it helped make things go faster, but now what it did was it watered down everything. Agreed. You know, so, you know, that's a good point, um, you know, that you bring up. Let me ask you this, man. How, how has it been for you, uh, you know, on the personal side with, with, with growing from such a small, organization to now the third largest in the world what was talent.com's like secret formula so to speak and to have that monster growth like share with the people out there like some of those things that helped you guys grow the way that you are yeah for sure uh, i think really it comes down to what i said a little bit earlier which is laser focus okay i want to make sure that uh, if you have a goal, then you stick to that goal and you do that really well. And to do that uh, is really hard sometimes because especially when you're talking to clients, they want different products. And, you know, we, we started actually because I came from the ATS world and we started to build the ATS at the beginning because some of our clients wanted an ATS as well and we were selling both. But then we quickly realized that it was not something that was going to help us scale. And therefore, we decided to decommission it and really focus on that one product, as I said. Um, I think then like, it's a matter of understanding uh, what are the opportunities that are uh, available to us. And clearly, like, coming to these conferences, uh, and I love the industry, uh, has helped us a lot because we realized that you know, we could do a lot of partnerships. And those partnerships helped, uh, helped us grow. Sure. So uh, well, right at this point. Talent.com partnership potentially in the future? We'll see. <laughs> We'd have to talk more. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. I got one last question for you before we get out of here and get back to the conference. Um, who is your typical uh, or ideal customer? That's a good question. I think uh, today, like the ideal customer is... Uh, a large enterprise type customer. Okay. It's someone that has a lot of vacancies okay. and they're looking to hire a lot of people, probably much more so in uh, blue collar type roles uh, because the, the truth is that's where we are the best. So the Amazon of this world, uh, also the gig economy as well, people are really like looking for um, a lot of uh, delivery drivers, for example, warehouse uh, people, we do really well with them. And I think it's because these people are looking for a job in, uh, in a platform that's very easy to use, sure. and that's what we do. Awesome. So let the people know where they can find you, how they can get a hold of you, and where they can find you guys online. For sure. So talent.com, that's very simple. That's our website. Um, and then uh, they can follow what we do um, on LinkedIn, and myself specifically on LinkedIn as well, Craig de Lenneville. That's as simple as that. All right. I don't know if it's complicated to pronounce. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful Right Sea executive interview here at Job Boards Connect in London, England. We're very appreciative that you came and shared some wisdom with us. And My pleasure. I look forward to working with you in the future. Sounds good. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Thank you.